Hello, I'm Carolyn and this video is showing the second way I know how to remove this white background from JPEG images so you can add a different coloured background. Now this method does involve a few more steps but it does have advantages if you create your own print and cut files this method is very useful and you can make your own background papers. To save time in this video, I'm not going to go through all the steps from the very beginning. If you watch part one of this video, which is on YouTube named Clip Set, I do go into much more detail showing the steps to this stage. So what I've done up to this stage is I selected the image, I traced it, I changed the trace line to a stroke line. You can see that I've just got a pink line around both of these and I did a little bit of editing so it followed the contour of the image the way I wanted it to. Now this is where this method differs. What I'm going to do is change these images into patterns. So at the moment I've got the center image selected and if I look in the notification region I can see the image is selected. So I'm going to go object, pattern, objects to pattern. Then I'm just going to drag the mouse around both parts and while they're both selected I'm going to go path division. Now it might not look like anything happened but I'll just zoom in. Let's just move the image aside. You can see the new one is underneath and there's actually two here. I actually do use this method for any of my print and cut projects. One of these images I'll use for printing and the other one I can use for cutting and then I can do a few more steps. Why I can use this image for actually cutting out, if I look down on fill I've got a pattern. I'll just double click on this pattern and we can see we've actually got nodes and you will find this always happens you've got a lot of nodes and you will need to reduce them so it doesn't cut too slowly. So all I do is go path simplify. You can see now I've got only a few nodes. Now it depends what program you're cutting from. I cut from sign cut and sign cut sometimes still rejects these images. So what I do is I turn the fill off. So I'll just right click and remove fill. Then I'll right click on stroke and just give it a black outline. So now I've got my image to print and my line to cut. Now I'm not going to go into further detail of how this can be used for a print and cut image because I do have a separate video showing the steps. So I'll just delete this one. Now we'll move to the angel. So I'll select the image, then I'll go object, pattern, object to pattern. I'll select both parts, then go path, division click on a blank part of the canvas then click back on the angel and move her aside and there's the two underneath. We'll just look closely at both of these. You can see that we've totally removed the white background once again. Now I'm going to show the next advantage of using this method. Now with this angel I'm just going to move her over. We'll just push those aside for the time being. Now this is going to sound strange. You can see as I move the angel she stays the same. Up here in effect, this very last icon, if I click on that, now when I move the angel, she actually starts changing. That's because the pattern is changing. And you can take advantage of this to make background papers. So I'm just going to make it larger. You can see the pattern is duplicating. Now this has got a really strange shape. Just for the video, I'm just going to add a black outline and make it fairly thick so you can see why. Now this is the angel that we had and this is the pattern I've made. Can you see the outline? It's actually the shape of the angel. So I'll just show another example. With this angel that's still got the white background, we can see it's got a pattern fill so we'll just do the same again. We'll just enlarge it and you can see that it's enlarged. We started with the rectangle, we've still got a rectangle. So you can keep that in mind when you're designing your background papers. Now let's zoom in. 
I do find this is a problem. These angels are very close to one another and I've got this black line running through them. Now if I'm making a background paper, I don't want this black line and I often want the image with a different spacing. After a little bit of experimenting, I have found one solution. And of course, if you're trying this out, you might find an even easier way. So I'm just going to click on the last icon on effect so I can move this angel without her changing. Just come to a blank area. What I'm going to do is add a white background to this. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now I can see that's not white at the moment, but I find it is often easier to work with the colour and then change it to white or to work in outline. So the rectangle, I'll resize it. Now when I create the pattern, all the new rectangles will touch on the border of this one. So this is where I can nominate the sizing. So I'll just go back to normal mode. I'm going to select both parts and just align them because I want them to be central to one another. Then I'm going to select the rectangle, change it to white. I'll just click on stroke and remove that stroke line. You can see if you're working on a white background this can be difficult. So now I'm just going to drag the mouse around to select both. Then I'll go object, pattern, objects to pattern. We can see the whole lot is now a pattern. So now on effect I'll click on the last icon and let's resize this again see what happens this time. And zoom right in. Can you see how these angels are spaced further apart and I don't have that line running through it. Now at the moment this angel is the same size as the one I traced and you're not limited to just that size. If you double click on the image can you see we get some more handles. So if I grab the square one and I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard so that the size is maintained and start moving it, I can make them smaller. Or of course if I move it out, I can make them larger. And this circular handle here, if you move that, you can actually start rotating the image. So for example, after sizing the paper and changing the size of the image, if that's what I want it to be, on effect, I'm going to click on the last icon so that when I move it, it's not going to continue changing. Now I actually print directly from Inkscape, but if you want to share the file with people who don't own Inkscape, you might want to make a bitmap copy or even export. So if you're using Inkscape to create files for your cutter, you might like to keep in mind that you can use it for more projects than just cutting files. And if you'd like more ideas on creating files for your cutter, feel free to visit my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you.